It's been so long since I've done this that I couldn't even remember where the record button was. So I'm not dead. <laughs> it's been a long ass time, so welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, um, or welcome for the first time, I'm Dadi. I used to post videos. Now I do like I do like a once a year check-in, I guess you could call it. Um, and I am here to do my once a year check-in. This time around, I'm gonna be doing the mid-year book freakout tag because as it has been well established in this channel, I love a tag. They're easy to do, easy to film, and easy to edit so I can get them done basically in a day and post them very quickly. So I am here to do the mid-year book tag. That is what I am going to do today. Have I read enough to feel like I can accomplish this well? No. Am I gonna do it anyway? Yes, I am. So without further ado, here we go. Question number one, best book you've read so far? I have two answers to this. One is Solomon's Crown by Natasha Siegel. This is a debut novel. I do have the physical copy. It's just out on loan right now to a friend. But basically, this is so sort of historical fiction but sort of not. The author makes it very clear in their author's note that she takes a lot of liberties with historical events so it's more fiction than historical fiction but it's sort of historical fiction and it's basically about a relationship between Richard I of England and Philip II of France and the relationship that they share. Historically there's been comments made about the friendly relationship that these two monarchs had and so Natasha Siegel basically just takes it and runs with it and I fucking loved this book. I saw it at the bookstore, I read the back, I was like this sounds really interesting I want to read it and thank god that I did. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars and the prose in it is just so beautiful that I like I am so glad that I read it it is it took me a little bit of to read it I think I spent like three weeks on and off reading it not because it was a bad book not because it was hard to get through mostly because it was one of those books that sometimes you start reading them and you want to finish it because you want to know how it ends but also you don't want to finish it because you don't want it to end and that was me and Solomon's Crown I loved it I loved both Richard and Philip and how they were portrayed and the relationship that they were building with each other and the prose was just absolutely beautiful and devastating. It was just a book that I like really wanted to finish because I wanted to see how it was going to turn out but I didn't want to finish it because I just didn't want to stop being in this world with these characters which is also kind of weird for me because I am not the biggest historical fiction girly. I am much more into the contemporary stuff so you know I was just like in love with everything about it. The second book that was the best that I've read so far is one that you have probably seen all over the internet and you know I am easily influenced when it comes to books not when it comes to a lot of other things but when it comes to books I am easily influenced so the other best book that I've read this year is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I am obsessed with this book. <laughs> So how this ended up in my hands, I've seen it all over my For You page on TikTok and I've seen everybody talking about it and I really wasn't gonna read it but then my friend Skylar bought it and read it and loved it and Skylar is someone that I can trust to like tell me if a book was terrible or not. So when I saw that she loved it, I was like, okay, so this is something that I could potentially read, right? And then I went on a trip a month ago to Boston to visit a friend and on my last day there I was like out around Boston just like going places also I went to college in Boston so I know the city pretty well and I was going to one of my favorite bookstores there and I saw it as soon as I got into the store and I was like this is a sign this is a sign that this is the book that I need so I bought this and other things and I started it at the airport and if it weren't for the fact that my flight was like in the dead of night so I was dead asleep for like the entirety of the flight I would have read this all night. This was fabulously good. I am pretty sure Rebecca Gallardo's put drugs in the pages because I could not stop reading this. I was glued to it, like glued to it, to the point that two weeks ago I was in Miami visiting other friends and because I naturally wake up pretty early in the mornings, I would just go out to the couch and just sit there and read until my friends were awake and we were like going to leave to do other things. To the point that there was a day, I think, that I read about a hundred pages in one day, but it was one of those days that like you find the perfect balance in between reading and like doing all the other stuff that you want to do because even though I read 100 pages that day I didn't 
stop doing all the other things that we wanted to do, right? So it was one of those days that you find perfect balance and are just like quite perfect and they don't come along all that often. That was that day while I was reading this book and I just freaking loved it. Some of the criticisms that have been around this book is that like some of the things are quite predictable and whatever, I don't care. Most books are predictable in some form or another. I had such a fun time with this. It's been such a long time since I had fun like so much fun while reading a book so honestly i don't care that it was partly predictable i just had the greatest time ever the ending was great the main character is one of my new favorite main characters ever i'm gonna be talking about this for a long long time and i want to read the sequel so badly november cannot get here soon enough okay question two best sequel you've read so far so uh this answer kind of comes by default because I haven't really read all that many sequels this year. Actually, I've only just read this one sequel this year because, you know, I've read, what, 13, 15 books this year in like seven months, which, you know, let's not talk about it too much. So by default, I guess the best sequel that I've read this year is Losers Part 2 by Harley LaRue. So this is part of the Losers series, which goes first, the prequel, which is The Dare, Losers Part 1, and then Losers Part 2. I rated Losers Part 2 four out of five stars, while The Dare and Losers Part 1 were five out of fives. I loved Losers Part 2. It's just that at some points, I did did feel like it was meandering a little bit too much and it was like okay we can start wrapping things up but other than that that is like what my one single complaint about the book I had the funnest time reading this this series became like a void for me for like a week because I basically read the entire thing in a week which is impressive considering that between both the main books it's about a thousand pages so yeah, I kind of want to reread it, but I always want to reread things that I like. So that's nothing new. Question number three, new release that you haven't gotten to yet. So this is a new release from last year, but it was late last year, so I'm counting it. And I haven't gotten to it yet, so it doesn't really matter. And also this is my channel, so I make the rules. Ha. That would be Blood Marked by Tracy Dion. I have the cover for this book. I honestly don't know where it is because Legendborn, which is uh, the first book in this series, when I ordered it, the cover ripped as I was opening the package because there was packaging glue stuck to the cover. Thanks for that, Barnes & Noble. So I took off the cover for this one as well because, you know, I didn't want them looking different on my shelves because that's the type of person that I am. So this one, I don't know where the cover is. I looked for it before this video, but I don't remember where it is. It's here somewhere, but I don't know where. So now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure it's back here, like inside here. But you know what? I'm not going to look for it now. We're, we're already doing this, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I really want to get to it. I reread Legendborn at the beginning of this year. That was literally the first book I read this year. So I could read this and I got about, what, 70 pages in, maybe? Yeah, I got about 70 pages in and then I just stopped because fuck knows why but i did so this is something that i want to get to question four most anticipated release for the second half of the year so i actually have three answers for this because of course i do first iron flame by rebecca yados i said this earlier i'm obsessed and I need more. <laughs> Two, Heartstopper Part 5. I'm very excited about that. I'm always excited about more Heartstopper. And we're getting the series in August, so I'm very excited about that as well. And finally, A Vermilion Curse by DC Guevara, which is a friend of mine. Um, so I'm very excited to read her book when it comes out in August. Question 5, Biggest Disappointment. Hmm. Embroideries by Marjan Satrapi. I picked this up at the bookstore on a whim. <laughs> Basically, I read the back of it and I was interested by it. I think it was also part of the staff picks and it's a graphic novel and I love a graphic novel. It's an easy, quick read, so I'm always interested in it. So this book is about the intimate sex lives of Iranian women and basically it's just all these women sitting <laughs> after lunch and just gossiping with each other. And honestly, I didn't have huge expectations for it, but I just like couldn't get into it. I just, I didn't love it. I was kind of disappointed by it. I Even though I didn't have the biggest expectations, I was still expecting a little bit more. I was a little bit bored. And I just, I don't know, it didn't move me, it didn't surprise me. It was just meh. Yeah, that's the best way that I can describe it. It was just meh. I gave it three stars because it wasn't like the worst book I've ever read. But it also wasn't the best. I, that's the best way I can put this. 
Question six, biggest surprise, was actually the Dare and Losers Part 1 by Harley LaRue. I went into the Dare with zero expectations and a little bit of hesitation because <laughs> there's clowns involved and I don't like clowns. Okay, so I was a little bit hesitant to read this book, but my friend Lucy, who sent it to me, was like, this is great, you need to read it. The clowns aren't all that big of an aspect of the book. And I was like, well, you have piqued my interest. Basically, what this book is about is this girl, Jess, who is at a Halloween party with all of her um, supposed high school friends. Uh, this is already out of high school. I think they're like 19, 20 already by the time the, the book starts. Maybe older? Actually, the, it might be older. It might be 21. I can't remember, honestly. But point is that she's at this party with all these like high school friends. Heavy quotations on those high school friends because they all suck. And she used to suck herself, but she you know, accepts. And then this guy, Manson, who she hooked up once and was bullied a lot of the time, he's there because he's like gotten in with the in crowd or something along those lines. And truth or dare is being played and dares are made and fun times occur. They have sex. They have like really raunchy, kinky sex. That's that's the best way to, for me to put it to you. And then in the and then towards the end, three of his friends come in and um, they become a part of this whole dynamic. A dynamic that's explored in Losers Part One and Losers Part Two. Honestly, I had like so much fun with this entire series. I wasn't expecting to have this much fun with it to fall into this deep dark void of it for an entire week basically so yeah this was definitely the biggest surprise of the year so far question seven is favorite new author debut or new to you my favorite new author is definitely natasha siegel who wrote solomon's crown her prose is one of the most beautiful things that i have read in recent times and i honestly cannot wait to see what she does next because i i think i'm obsessed her prose was just like equally heartbreaking and beautiful in equal measures like I said earlier I didn't want to put the book down but at the same time I didn't want it to end right it, like I wanted to know how it was gonna turn out but I didn't want to you know want it to end because it was just so beautiful it was breaking my heart like in all the best ways so yeah definitely Natasha Siegel is somebody that I will be looking out for their next book question eight is newest fictional crush I usually never have an answer for this one but this year I have an answer if you thought we were done talking about this book we're not my newest fictional crush is Dayton Rearson from fourth wing first of all he wields shadows which if you're on book internet, you know. You know. You know. One, this is actually like enemies to lovers. Like, they wanted to kill each other for real these. But also, one of the things that I love about Zayden, other than the fact that he's like smoking hot, is that once he like gets over his own hatred for Violet, which is the main character, he goes out of his way to like try to make her life a little bit easier without having to be asked. So taking Violet's disability into account, he does things that are going to make her life easier without some without needing to be prompted into it, right? Which I think is just like incredibly hot. And I just love him throughout the entire book, even from the first moment when he realizes who she is and that they like automatically have a specific relationship because of who she is. I'm trying not to give spoilers <laughs> because they have an, an sort of inherent relationship because of who both of them are once he like gets over it he is very much like oh you need help and i'm gonna provide it without you having to ask me for it and i'm gonna try to protect you to the best of my abilities in this college that just like is designed to kill you so yeah no uh zayden rearson has my whole entire heart i think this is the first time in like four years since i started this channel that i actually have an answer for this question zayden rearson we love you <laughs> Question nine is new favorite characters and fourth wing makes the comeback. Clearly it's obvious that I love this book. <laughs> Violet Sarengale, which is the main character of this book, and Taryn, her dragon. I love them. I love them. I love Violet for who she is as a character and how even though she has a disability, she never lets that stop her. And the fact that she figures out how to thrive in this place that is 
literally quite literally designed to kill someone like her and she doesn't let that get her down it is one of the most beautiful things ever i've ever seen and her resilience in the face of impending death is it, just inspiring and i love her for it and also she's a snarky smart ass which i love as a snarky smart ass yeah violet has my whole heart and then turn her dragon is just the sassiest grumpy motherfucker you will ever meet and i adore him for that his like should i get the wing leader moment iconic so sassy so grumpy love him for it two of my new favorite fictional characters question 10 is book that made you cry we don't have an entry for it this year Again, I haven't read all that many books this year. I've read like 15, I think, and none of them have brought me even close to tears this year. So we got some more to do for the second half of the year is what I'm hearing. Question 11, book that made you happy? So I have two answers for this. One is one that everybody's gonna roll their eyes out because I talk about this book at nauseam on this channel, on the internet in general, in person if you've ever met me, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I just reread this this week because the movie's coming out next month, and so that required a reread. Also, I realized as I was rereading it that it has been a year since I've touched this book, and it still makes me just as happy as it did the first time that I read it, even though I've read it like 11 times now. I promise I'm okay most of the time. <laughs> so this book still makes me incredibly happy. I realized that one of the reasons why it still makes me so incredibly happy is because like I love Henry and like Henry is ev everything that I both want in a partner and aspire to be. So yeah. <laughs> The second book that made me really happy was Gloria by Sarah Simone. It's a short story. It's a sinner short story. It's part of the Priest series. Each book focusing on one of the Bell brothers and Sinner focuses on Sean Bell and Zenny. And I really love this. This short story actually takes place like the day before their wedding. And it was just like really cute, very sweet, a little bit spicy. I really love their dynamic in their book. So getting a little bit more of them was just like quite wonderful so I just really enjoyed it it made me happy I really like the priest series although I do have to say that sinner and saint which are the second and third book are my favorites in the series priest is just there <laughs> out of the bell brothers Sean and Aiden are my favorite and Tyler is just there <laughs> Although I do have one single bone to pick now that we're talking about this I found out upon reading Gloria that Sean is a blonde which no. No. No, no, no. I, I refuse. Forevermore in my mind, in my heart, uh, Sean Bell has dark hair, okay? Sean Bell has dark hair hair. I don't care what the book description says. He has dark hair. So there are four Bell brothers, Tyler, Sean, Aiden, and Ryan. And in my mind and in my heart, Tyler and Ryan are the blondes. And then Sean and Aiden have dark hair because Sean Bell is not a blonde. Okay. That man is not blonde coated. I don't care what Sierra Simone says. Love you still. Do not care what you say on this topic. And that has been my rant. <laughs> Question 12 is most beautiful books that you've bought. I have one that I bought and one that was a gift. First, the one that I bought is the fifth anniversary illustrated edition of If We Were Villains. So I have this book on ebook, which is how I read it the first time and then become obsessed. And when I saw that this beautiful edition was coming out, I just had to get it. It is illustrated on the inside and it has like these like beautiful artwork on the inside. And I think it has like a, some more artwork. Give me a second. It does have more artwork on the inside. And I just loved it. This book is very pretentious but I love it. It has my whole Shakespeare love and heart. So yeah, this is one of the most beautiful books that I have bought this year. As for the book that was gifted to me is the entire collection of Sherlock Holmes and other stories. This was a gift from my godmother. It is incredibly beautiful. It has like the leather binding and illustrations on the inside and it has like the gold foil pages and it's quite beautiful and I love it. Finally, question 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, so I have three books, okay? Because I can never do this simply. That's me, simple. <laughs> I have three books and all three books are from series that I have started and have not finished yet, right? The point that they have published right now. 
right? And that are already in my possession. So first, Dragon Blood Ring by Amparo Ortiz. I read Boys Wrath Games when it came out and I bought this as soon as it came out and I haven't read it yet. So I really need to read it before the end of the year. I also might just have to read Blaze Wrath Games because I don't quite remember what happens in it. Next is Libres by Noemi Casquet. I read Zorras and Malas last year and I haven't gotten to Libres yet. So this needs to get read before the end of the year so I can like just finish that trilogy out and I'm hoping that since Soraz was just turned into a series and I really want to watch it that will inspire me to read this and finally a book that I've already talked about is Bloodmarked like I said I reread Legendborn at the beginning of the year so I could read this and then I didn't so this needs to get read I should just probably read it right now <laughs> I mean I already I, I started it I read like 70 pages of it and then I just didn't keep reading, so maybe this should probably be my next read. So, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but yeah, this definitely needs to get read before the end of the year. That's it! I made it! <laughs> it's been so long since I've done one of these. So yeah, I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna try to post more because I say that all the time and then I never do. Honestly, if I could have more tags to do, I'd do this more often probably because tags are just like easy to do and I love doing them. Anyway, that has been my mid-year book freakout tag. I had the best time doing it and I should probably get to reading some more. Part of the reason why I haven't read all that much is because like I know that I don't have the time for it. So I set a really low, like achievable Goodreads goal for this year. So I'm technically on track to finish it on time by the end of the year. So, huh? <laughs> Thank you for listening to me rant for a little bit about the books that I have read. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you had a fun time watching me ramble and lose my shit as I usually do on these videos. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe and I will hopefully see you soon but who knows with me. I've been Dottie. Bye!